Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of January 11, 2021. And this week I got five topics I want to talk about. First one is kind of a big one. We're talking about the uh, regulation, the, the big new FA regulation is hitting the federal register. And we'll talk about what that means. And we have some dates that I want to share with you. I want to talk about Sony that is previewing their new drone. Uh, we talked about this in the past and then we finally get some images. Looks pretty cool. We'll talk about something that happened, a publication that went in and that's going to affect the Chinese drones again. Uh, the US government posted some uh, new executive orders. We'll talk about that. I want to talk about the Drone Service Provider Alliance and they're adding an FPV advocate to their board of advisors. So this is a good news. And then I want to finish with some uh, drones for good news uh, with a, something that happened in Australia. So let's get started. Okay, the first piece this week is the fact that the FAA finally put the regulation on the Federal Register. Now, this may not sound like a big deal, but this actually starts the clock for a lot of the regulation that we've seen uh, coming up recently, remote ID, operations over people, night flying, and then the currency thing. So all of this was final regulation, but it needed to be put on the federal register to be official. So uh, today, actually January 15, 2021 is the day that this is posted on the register, which means that from here on, we can start the counter. You may have heard me on previous video when I said 45 days after uh, publication, 60 days after publication, and then 24 months, 30 months, uh, all of that, that all came from that registration. So registration is today. This is the day that everything starts. And uh, so let's take a look at some of uh, some key important dates. The first one is March 1, 2021, which is kind of when the first set of regulation is going into effect. And this is when the FA night training becomes available on the FA website. If you remember, if you want to fly at night after March 16 of 2021, then you're going to have to do training and the training becomes available on March 1st. So March 1st is kind of a, a big deadline right here. Also March 1st, when that training becomes available is the first day that you can do recurrent training online for free by taking the FAA training module that's going to be available. So no more uh, UGR after March 1st of 2021. So if you want to renew your certificate, you can do it online with the FA for free by just doing the training and then you're good to go. Um, something else that's going to happen on this day is uh, the questions on the initial exam on March 1st of 2021. The questions on the initial exam are going to be changing. There's going to be night questions that are going to be added on that day. So if you take the exam after March 1st of 2021, make sure that you receive training uh, from your training provider by doing your research or whatever it is that you do. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit in a second. March 16 is the next big deadline. That's the day that you can start operating at night without a waiver as long as you took the training on the FA website or as long as you took the initial training, the initial written exam after March 1st of 2021. Also March 16 of 2021 is the day that the operations over people regulation goes into effect. Now, it's a bit complex because there's going to have to be categories, category two, especially in category three, uh, which won't really happen more than likely. I'm, I'm taking a guess here won't happen on March 16 of 2021. It is possible, it is possible that with some changes, you might be able to fly a sub 250 gram drone over people by following the new regulation on March 16, but it may take a few more days. So the regulation hits the book and becomes active on March 16, but you have to make sure that you follow the regulation. There's a video coming up uh, that I'm gonna talk about this next week and, uh, and just make sure that you know exactly what you're doing. Um, another date that's important, which is way in the future, which is going to be September 16 of 2022. This is when the drone manufacturers have to comply with the remote ID. So 2022, okay, September of 2022. And then September 16 of 2023 is when you will have to comply with remote ID in order to fly in the airspace outside of Afria. The Freya is the, the recognized areas from the FAA where you can fly without remote ID. But after September 16, 16 of 2023, then all of that is going to go uh, out the window and then you will have to uh, comply with remote ID. So that's, those are the dates. Put them on your calendar, do whatever you want. I'll be reminding you obviously when all these things happen, but 
it's important to understand why today is kind of a, a critical day because that's when it kind of resets the clock. Okay, uh, speaking of the night training, the night training is going to be available on the FA website. That's what qualifies you to be current again. That's what qualifies you to be able to fly at night without a, uh, a night waiver, uh, 107.29 night waiver, but we've already made our training available on our website. The reason I did this is because the FAA training that comes out on March 1st of 2021 is gonna be pretty cut and dry. It's probably gonna be pretty basic. And I'm making an assumption here, but I've taken the training before. And so based on that, we actually made videos that are pretty appealing, that have good animations, that actually have more information than just the regulation. Um, we talk about operating at night, we give you some tips, we talk about strobe lights, we talk about a whole bunch of different things. And it's available for free. So uh, I'll put a link down here, you can do it. It's about 50 minutes, I think, total of, uh, of training. Obviously if you're a part 107 student and you're studying to become a remote pilot it is available also in our course so you can find it there um, and then you can basically do the training uh, if you're doing this for recurrent purposes and just doing it so you can get additional training my training does not qualify to replace the FAA training in this case for uh, for becoming recurrent if you already have your certificate but uh, you can still use the link down there and then do that training for free so uh, something that we offer if you want to be more knowledgeable than just passing a test this is what we do, then, uh, then you can take advantage of that. The next thing I want to talk about is Sony. Sony was in the news a couple weeks ago. I lose track of time easily, but uh, we talked about their AirPeak series, which is something that they were going to come up with. And this week they released video of this Sony AirPeak. And uh, this week is CES 2021, and that's where they released the information. You can see some videos, and I'm playing right here in the background of the drone in itself. It's a quadcopter. It is designed to carry a Sony Alpha mirrorless camera. And this is kind of exciting, actually. Um, I, I film I filmed this, this, uh, these courses and all these videos using the, the Panasonic GH5 and the GH5S. And, um, but I also use a Sony A7 III and in putting an A7 III, which is a mirrorless full frame uh, camera on a drone has been a challenge. Using the Matrice 600, it's been very painful to try to put this, this drone and make it work. You can control it from the ground. There's very limited things you can do with it. So I'm actually kind of excited to see what Sony is gonna do with this AirPeak and, uh, and hopefully they don't limit it to just being a Sony Alpha carrier. Hopefully I can use my GH5, my GH5S and any other gear that I have that fits underneath this uh, drone. They're about the same weight, about the same size, and hopefully we can get some control. So um, we don't have too many specs at the moment. Uh, they kind of showed the drone, kind of showed some videos of what it can do. Uh, they call it the smallest class of drones that can be equipped with the Alpha system. So uh, again, like I said, hopefully they don't limit it to just the Sony Alpha. Uh, I like the Sony A7 III, but quite frankly, uh, I'm a Panasonic uh, fan in this case. I think the GH5, and, and I might get roasted for this, the GH5 and GH5S are actually better cameras, but that's uh, that's just my, my personal experience. Um, this thing is expected to be released to the public in the spring of 2021. And uh, there's a great article that uh, Kara Murphy uh, wrote, and I'm gonna put it down here so you can read it on a DP review. Uh, but so exciting. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about the Sony. Uh, tell me if this is something that obviously it's not gonna be cheap. This is not a replacement for the, um, for the Mavic. This is not a Mavic level drone. This is something where you can attach a uh, mirrorless camera with lenses and with full frame. And this is gonna be competing obviously obviously with the uh, Inspire 2 and uh, and with the X7 camera on top of it. So uh, again, yeah, this is good. Competition is always a good thing for us, the consumer. Uh, next topic I want to talk about is uh, more trouble in the US versus China tech relationship or tech war, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there was an executive order that was signed in early January of 2021 that uh, takes aim at Chinese software. Now, in this case, it is software. Uh, this will go into effect in law in 45 days. So um, obviously, because of the changes in, um, in, the, in the president, then there's a chance that this may never even go anywhere. But we'll find out. I'll let you know when I hear if it's, if it's got reverted. But uh, the goal of the order is to prevent the collection of, and I quote unquote here, it says, uh, prevent the collection of vast swath of information from users, including sensitive, personally, 
identifiable information and private information. This is a quote from the executive order. Um, several companies were actually named in this executive order. DJ, DJI and other Chinese drone manufacturers were not actually named uh, per se on this order, but this could actually have uh, an effect on how we interface with Chinese companies that make software. So. Uh, I'll keep you posted on this if we hear more. Obviously, again, 45 days before this goes into play. The next thing I wanna talk about is our friends at the DSPA, the Drone Service Provider Alliance, Vic and Kenji, you've seen them on several videos. Uh, they are adding a new board member, actually their first board member or board of advisory member. And uh, his name is David Messina. And if you don't know David, uh, Dave has been a a proponent for the FPV community for several years. Uh, he's been involved with the FAA at many levels uh, to try to spread the word about FPV and try to give a voice to the FPV community. And he's the president of the FPV Freedom Coalition and, uh, and, and a great advocate. So I'm really excited to see him join hands with Vic and Kenji on the DSPA. Uh, a lot of you had uh, complained because, well, a couple, well, about a week ago, I guess, uh, the FA released the name of new people that were going to go on the, the DAC, the Drone Advisory Committee, and both Vic and Kenji uh, were selected, which is great, uh, because this is the first time we actually have representation from the uh, boots on the ground guys, the, 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 the people that actually fly drones for a living, as opposed to being CEO of large companies that uh, have a, a big vested interest in uh, having drones up in the sky. So, uh, great to see both Vic and Kenji in there. A lot of you had said, well, what about the FPV community? Vic and Kenji are going to be uh, focusing on the drone service providers, even though both of them are also uh, hobbyists, if you want to call it that, when they fly for fun on the side. They also have FPV drones. So they're bringing on board David, who's going to be also a voice and is going to help them to kind of create a larger voice for pretty much everyone out there who's flying drones. So this is good news. I'm excited about this. Uh, FPV Freedom Coalition is a 501c3, and their goal is to advocate to the FA for the rights of recreational pilots. So I think this is uh, a good, uh, a good uh, sharing of information between those two groups. All right, last topic this week is Drones for Good. Uh, this happened in Australia. There was a, a group of people, uh, four people and a child and a baby, that went to a waterfall. And uh, apparently on that day, there was a major um, uh, rain that hit the area. And, uh, and they were able to use a drone to send an SOS signal so that they could get rescued. And I thought this was really clever. So. Um, the area where they get stuck didn't have any cell phone reception. One of the adults realized that they had a drone that they could use, so they typed a text message and they hit sent. They put the drone, they put the, the cell phone on the drone and then send the drone up in the air so it could pick up a signal so that it could actually send a text message. So they sent their location, they were rescued, and, uh, and they did this because they had a drone available. So um, this is actually a great thing for any kind of emergency situation. I hike a lot all and and I have other devices. I have a, a GPS that I can turn on so people can come and get me. But if you're ever in a situation where you're stuck and all you have is your drone in your backpack and you don't have cell phone reception, just remember it could be because of the mountains surrounding you. So if you just go up in the air, then you'd be able to get uh, a signal from further away. So uh, just just a great just a, a great story that shows how drones can be used. Okay, this is all I have for this week. As always, like, comment, uh, subscribe if you haven't. We just hit 11,000 uh, subscribers, so uh, we're starting the year really well. And then uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next week for more drone news. And actually, uh, there's, been, uh, there's been videos I want you to take a look at. Uh, we posted earlier this week. One of them is how to renew your drone pilot certificate in 2021. So I go, it's a 10 minute long video and it kind of explains how to renew with the new regulation. And then I have one that explains how to do uh, to fly at night without a waiver. So kind of simplifying all the regulation. Again, two 10 minute videos kind of go over uh, all the details that you need to understand. I answer some questions that I've been hearing online trying to clarify things. Uh, I'm gonna also save you $160 because it looks like some companies have decided that uh, they were gonna lie to their customers, to their face, just so they can take their money and uh, and sell the recurrent training course when you don't need to have a recurrent training course starting March of 2021. So uh, don't fall for it. Go watch the video. I talk a little bit more about this. And uh, okay, now this is it. That's all I have. I'll see you guys next week and uh, fly safe.